By this Tuesday, just about everyone will be back to school, whether that means leaving the house or not. Every district and every family has had to make tough choices this year. So what has the pand pandemic revealed about our education system? My next guest is Erin Einhorn. She's a reporter who writes a lot about education and the resource and racial disparities that accompany it. She's a national reporter for NBC News and before that was the founding editor of Chalkbeat Detroit. Aaron, great to have you with us this morning. Uh, what are you hearing about how the back to school journey is going so far and has it exposed the racial disparities many thought it would? I mean, I, I'm not hearing a lot of enthusiasm about how great it's going. I can say that for sure. Um, and actually, my kids went back to school virtually last week, and I can tell you from you know first person experience, it's not going well. Um, it's definitely it's definitely going to be challenging. Um, this is obviously, you know, there, there's there are very few schools, very few teachers, very few parents who will tell you that you know this is, is is you know that this is what we want you know that we're we're you know that it's that it's going well or that it's serving all children well and you asked about racial disparities economic disparities and for sure um the kids with the with with the fewest resources are the ones who are who are going to struggle the most yeah and you know as the summer went on and we were building up to this and and I talked to uh, or covered at least a few stories of school districts having those battles. And it really was kind of disheartening to hear how it was parents versus teachers in a lot of ways. Um, do you feel like that can be remedied or how is that relationship going to, I guess, be more amplified as a lot of kids are going from home? I mean, you know, to some extent, it's parents versus teachers. I mean, to, to other extents, it's it's parents versus themselves. I mean, you know, in districts that do have a choice, and not all districts do. So, you know, 20, you know, in Michigan, I think it's like 20, 25% of districts aren't offering a in-person option at all, right? Or maybe it's somewhat less than that. But so there's some districts where it's got to be virtual if you don't have a choice. There's some districts, particularly up north, where in-person is the only option. You know, the majority of districts are giving parents a choice, right? You can either, and some of some of it's hybrid. Maybe it'll be two days in the classroom and three days at home, you know, or, or you can choose between five days in the classroom and five at home. And you know, within a family, right? You might have one parent who's got a pre-existing condition, or a grandparent who lives in the home who might be at high risk for getting the coronavirus. Um, but at the same time, the family might know that you know their child is struggling to learn to read or their child has special needs and really needs that in-person attention. all kids really need that in-person attention i don't think anyone's going to dispute that with the exception of a small minority of kids who might thrive somehow online most kids really need to be in school and so within every family you've got to have you got to make these choices you know is my child's education worth exposing my family to that risk you know and with teachers you know, they might not have a child, so it's, it's, you know, is my job worth exposing me and my family to that risk? And it's just really hard choices that we're all having to grapple with. Um, and I think, you know, until we get out, you know, until the pandemic's over, I don't know that school will ever really be what it should be without that anxiety level. Sure. And as a parent, uh, I want to ask what your biggest, because you said it's not going great yet for your kids, but <laughs> what's your biggest fear? And as a reporter, how do you see this playing out as we go through the school year? I mean, you know, my biggest fear as a parent, of course, is that it's, it'll be a lost year. I think, and I hear that, I've been talking to a lot of parents um, in Detroit and around the country who are just saying, you know, yeah, is my kid gonna learn anything this year? I mean, in my case, my kids are little, right? I have a first grader and a third grader. And the first grader, you know, we, we, we put the Zoom meeting in front of him and he just clicks leave meeting and he's, he's out, right? <laughs> like, I don't know, he was like, you know, I don't know, we're still trying to figure out, I mean, it's, it was the first week for him, hopefully he'll come around, but like, you know, and this is, you know, and, you know, and, and I, you know, my family, we have, we're, we're home, you know, my husband and I are both working from home, there's two parents, we're, we have, we, and we have the, we have the Wi-Fi and we have the devices, we have all the things we need to make it work and we're struggling, right? Now imagine it's a single parent who's got a job working the night shift or isn't home during the day or doesn't have, you know, that data connection or doesn't have the device or like, you know, spotty internet, right? So you sign in for your class and it's not gonna connect. Um, and then you have teachers, right? A lot of teachers are being asked to teach their class both to the at-home kids and the in-the-room kids. So they have to essentially write the curriculum twice 
because you can't just stand in front of a camera and teach the same class online that you would in the classroom. It's got to be different if you're going to do it well. And, you know, some districts have invested in training their teachers for this. Others didn't have the resources. Others didn't have time. Some districts were planning to go face to face right up until a couple of weeks ago when they pulled the plug on that. And it's just been, you know, it's been really hard for schools to plan without really knowing, you know, what things were going to happen. You know, and even actually districts that have opened, you know, they could have an infection, you know, they could have a, a, a positive case next week and then they'll suddenly be, they'll suddenly be virtual. And then they've planned for in-person, the teachers wrote curriculum for in-person and now they're not gonna be in-person anymore. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't think anybody you know, has the answer on, on what it should look like because uh, I mean, I, you know, I think everyone's just hoping it'll end. <laughs> right. I think it's, it's fun moment. to think of kids, you know, uh, playing around and not getting the Zoom meeting, but scary when you think these are extremely tough times that they really need that. Let me, uh, I've got about 30 seconds. Let me just quickly ask you, um, the schools or the districts that are in-person learning that are, have really pushed forward, do we really think they have a plan if an outbreak happens there? I mean, it's going to be district by district. I, I mean, I know districts had to submit plans to the state, you know, and of course they've got to have the masks and the social distancing. There's those guidelines they have to follow. They have to have a plan for an infection. But, you know, like everything, some people are, it's, you know, some districts are going to be better prepared than others. Yeah. And, you know, some have more resources than others. And that's just, that's how our school system works. Yeah. So well, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. And I, I'm sure we're going to hear lots and lots of complaints probably the places where it is going well, we may not hear that they may not make as much noise. Um, so we'll assume there's some where it's going to go perfectly. But yeah. um, I, I mean, we should be we should all, you know, brace ourselves. We're <laughs> definitely bracing ourselves and rooting for kids for sure. Aaron, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. We will dig into where major development projects in Detroit stand right after this.